Well, hello, and thanks for joining us here at Calvary today. My name is Robert. I'm one of the pastors here at Calvary. If you're new and maybe you've been checking out our church for the first time here online, uh, either today or the last few weeks, we're so grateful that you're here. Uh, we normally would love to shake your hand and, uh, and answer any questions you have about the church, but we'd still love to connect with you even though we can't do that. So click the button uh, down below or click the link if you're watching on Facebook so that we can connect with you and say thanks for joining us here online. Also, we wanna encourage you right now to share this with a friend or family member. So send them a text, tag them in the comments, uh, and invite them to join us in service today. Go ahead and do that right now. Well, hey, our, our team has a great service planned for you, so sit back and get ready for a great time of worship. Here it is. was buried beneath my shame who could carry that kind of weight it was my turn till I met you I was breathing but
Hey, what a great time of worship we got started today. You know, one of the best things for us uh, at Calvary during this time of shutdown has been seeing you as a church experience new milestones with your relationships with Jesus. And one of the tangible ways we've been able to see that is through baptism. Now, we have to understand that baptism doesn't save us, doesn't wash away our sins, only a life-changing relationship with Jesus can do those things. But baptism is an outward declaration of an inward decision to follow Christ. And over the last five or so weeks, almost 30 people at Calvary have done this. And we have a few more this week. Take that step of faith. Check this out. Miss Arai, have you accepted, you look in the camera. Here, let me look this way. Have you accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior? Yes. Amen. My sister, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Give me this hand. Cup your nose. Cup your nose. Buried in baptism, raised to walk. You good? Praise the Lord. All right. Man, so cool seeing a life change at work here. If you're a follower of Jesus and you'd like to take this step and be baptized as well, let us know. You can click the button below right now or click the link in the comments and let us know or get in touch with the church office at 928-855-6533. We'd love to help you take that step of obedience this week. But until then, we have some more great worship for you. Check this out. Never ends, it's never been 
Hey, Calvary family. Thank you for joining us at our online campus. We know this is difficult for you. It's difficult for everybody, uh, but we're so glad you're joining us today. Uh, people have been asking when I run into them at the grocery store or wherever it is, uh, they've been asking what it's like to preach to a camera in an empty room. Well, it is hard. As pastors, we want to see you. We, we want to see you smiling, leaning forward, and reacting to the message. Um, preaching to an empty room is like kissing your spouse through a screen door. It just ain't the same. But for now, this is the best way, so we do it. Uh, let me invite you to interact with your Calvary family online today, even while I preach. If you get bored, don't X out. If there's a point that causes you to want to praise God, then, then praise God in the comment section. If there's a point that excites you, type out the word amen. If there's a moment that leads maybe even to brokenness, then reach out for prayer. Now, kids in the room, if you're sitting there and you have your children in the room or your grandchildren in the room, let me talk to you for just a minute. I know us pastors can be B-O-R-I-N-G, boring. I get it. I want to invite you, though, to stay connected with the sermon today. So here's what I want you to do. Go grab some crayons, some markers, colored pencils, and I'd like for you to draw a picture of Jesus surrounded by his followers going up into heaven. So go run and get, the, get those crayons right now. Now, parents, we want to see those pictures during today's message. So snap a picture and tag Calvary in whatever social media form you use. It'll be fun. Today, we are continuing our sermon series, Impossible, and we are going to look at Luke chapter 24, verses 50 through 53. Now, the passage is going to be on the screen in front of you, or if you peek outside your window right now, one of our pastors are right outside the door and they are bringing a Bible to you. Just kidding. Well, in Luke chapter 24, uh, we, we see what happened before. Jesus had been killed and Jesus had risen from the dead. For 40 days after he rose from the dead, he walked around, he ate, and he spent more time with his disciples. At the end of his 40 days, at the end of his physical life here on this earth, he gathered his friends on a mountaintop before he departed, and then he begins to talk to them, to speak to them. He is talking to his friends one last time. It's one last time to teach them. Uh, this is it. They are never going to hear from Jesus again. So let's read together in Luke chapter 50, uh, Luke chapter 24, verses 50 through 53. Let's read together. And he led them out as far as Bethany and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. And while he blessed them, he parted from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple blessing God. You know, I, I've never heard of anybody using their dying words to criticize their closest friends. Uh, for the most part, if somebody knows that they are passing from this world, they are very careful with their last words uh, to their loved ones. They don't want to waste their breath being critical. Uh, they, uh, they, 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 they don't waste their breath talking about how much their loved ones have disappointed them in their lives. Now, wouldn't it be terrible if we had a tradition in the United States to air out our grievances on our deathbed? It, it reminds me of the, the Seinfeld episode where Frank Costanza creates a holiday called Festivus. And at the uh, Festivus dinner, he goes around the table and tells everybody why he's sick of them. Well, you know, we think that that idea is funny, but the truth is, while many people may not leave this earth that way, criticizing and, and tearing people down, the reality is many people live this way. They use their words to criticize, tear down, and destroy other people. They use their words and influence to hurt others. You know, 
And who knows why? Who knows why they do that? Uh, the, these type of people give me the heebie-jeebies. I avoid them. I get uncomfortable around them. My skin starts itching. I begin to sweat. I begin to think of how in the world can I get away from them? But that's not how Jesus used his final words on this earth. Did you catch what he did with his last words? Jesus left with a blessing. Now, that word blessing can be hard to understand. I grew up an altar boy, and I remember the priest taking holy water and flicking it on people in the church. Uh, and they can, everybody considered that a blessing. Maybe you remember the movie Rocky. Right before his big fight, Rocky asks Father Carmine for a blessing, and Father Carmine said a prayer in Italian and made the sign of a cross. Even what do you, what do we say when somebody sneezes? That's right. I, I heard you from your home. We say, God bless you. So what does it mean biblically to bless others? So I, I want to encourage you right now to write this down. A blessing means, a blessing is to speak well of, to thank, or to ask God's favor on an individual. So understand what Jesus was doing. As Jesus was leaving, he wasn't telling his disciples that they better clean his room, clean their room before he gets back. He, he did not threaten to punish them if they didn't go around the world spreading the gospel or if they did something wrong while he was gone. Before he ascended into heaven, Jesus spoke well of his disciples. He thanked them. He asked for God's favor to be on them. Do, do you understand what he did? He blessed them through encouragement. He spoke words of life over them. He didn't point out all their flaws, although he certainly could have. Instead, he focused on using his words to cause their hearts to swell with joy and not just any type of joy, great joy. Now that's far, that is a far different reaction than the last time they thought that Jesus had left them. Do you remember after he was crucified, they thought they'd lost Jesus forever? They felt hopeless, they grieved, they mourned, they felt isolated, they felt abandoned, and they felt as though they were alone. Some even felt regret over what they didn't do. Peter felt guilty over refusing to acknowledge that he was one of Jesus' disciples. But now, after these words of blessing that Jesus spoke, the disciples went down the mountain with great joy after Jesus left again. See, don't you feel good when others speak well of you? Don't you feel good when somebody goes out of their way to say thank you to you and appreciate you and value you? Now, if I were to be honest, like Jesus, I sometimes feel like I bless others because I leave. Uh, sometimes I'm cranky. Sometimes I'm tired. And frankly, sometimes my attitude is not honoring Christ the way it should. Instead of being a blessing to other people, I can come across as blunt. I can come across as rude. And I'm sure that my departure is more of a blessing to them than my presence brings. But I don't want that for my life. I want to be more of a blessing to my family, uh, my staff, my church, my community than I currently am. I, I want to reflect the character of Christ all the time. Now, I know this sounds impossible. It, it sounds like I can't constantly be a blessing to others all the time, but I can honestly say that I feel terrible. I feel terrible when I let my bad attitude impact the way I speak to others. I, I feel horrible if I go home frustrated and it comes out in my tone with my wife or my children. 
And if, if you are a follower of Jesus, meaning at some point you made the decision to trust your life to Jesus, that you turn your heart to God, you understood that Jesus died on the cross for your sins, you accepted him as your savior, then I have to believe you want to bless others with your words as well. So let me encourage you with this simple truth. Jesus blessed others and so can you. You and I can bless other people with our words. We can begin to speak well of other people. See, the people you get upset with, instead of slamming them, speak well of them to their face and behind their back. Focus on the positive about them. See, the truth is anybody can be a critic. Anybody can point out things about others that they feel are wrong. But followers of Jesus can see the positive about people and love others with the love of Jesus. See, followers of Jesus can, can bless their enemies. See, when Jesus said that followers of Jesus ought to bless their enemies, uh, the bless the people who say bad things about us, who mistreat us, uh, that means that's exactly what we do. He, he wasn't meaning that we bless our enemies or sprinkle them with holy water. It means we speak well of those that don't speak well of us. Again, whether that's uh, to their face or behind their back. We are blessed as followers of Jesus. We get to show mercy to those who mistreat us. Now, not only should we speak well to bless others, but we can bless others by thanking them. It costs nothing to give the gift of thanks. It's so easy to say thank you to people. That's what Jesus did as he was blessing his disciples before he left. And it cost Jesus nothing. It cost nothing to give a gift of thanks. So let me show you how easy it is to say thank you. I'm going to first thank my wife, Christy. Thank you for your patience with me. I can be a hard man to love, but you are patient with me, so thank you. To our tech team, Steve, BJ, and Robert, thank you for all your hard work and helping us to have church online week after week. You guys are working your tails off and we're so grateful. Worship team, Jesse, Joseph, Jared, Claudia, thank you for leading your volunteer teams and our Calvary family week after week in worship. We all know it's been challenging, but you are making it happen. Calvary family, thank you for liking and commenting and sharing our videos with others. The reality is we have no idea if we are ministering to you or not. And it helps to know that we are on the right track whenever you like, comment, or share. And see, that's how easy it is to bless others with a thank you. So I want you to try it at home. Who do you need to say thank you to at your house? Is it a spouse who works hard to provide for your family? Do you have a, a brother or sister that uh, shares their toys, their clothes, their cell phone? Kids, do you have a parent who has become your teacher's online assistant uh, for school right now? Then say thank you. Say thank you and bless them. And, and then finally, ask God's favor upon everybody. Bless others with a prayer. Pray for your family, your children, your grandchildren. Pray for your teachers and your schools and your neighbors. Pray for the people that love you and pray for the people that hate you. Ask God to pour out his favor on all those you come in contact with. And here's what's gonna happen. As you begin to bless others with your words, you are going to begin to experience the great joy found by blessing others. It is not impossible to live your life as a blessing to others. 
live your life in such a way that whether people see you coming or going, you are going to bring heaps of blessing to their lives. It's so easy to live our lives blessing other people. I want to challenge you, go out and do it today. You can do it online. You can be a blessing to other people online. You can be a blessing to your family today simply by being more grateful and appreciative for everything that your family does for you. You can, you can pray for God's favor over other people and over friends and family and your neighbors. Whatever it is, you have the ability to bless other people just as Jesus did. As we think about living our lives as blessings to other people, I know that can be challenging, it can be difficult, but ask yourself, don't you feel good when other people bless you? You can be a blessing to other people today. Now, if you're sitting in your homes, we're gonna close out in prayer. I wanna ask if you are together with your family, maybe you're on the couch together, you can reach over, grab hands if you would like, maybe stand up, join hands in circle, and uh, let's just go to the Lord and pray together. Father, we thank you. We thank you for the words of life, the words of blessing that Jesus spoke over his disciples. And Lord, we want to ask that you would use us as your followers to bless other people. We pray that you would pour your favor out on Lake Havasu City and in Parker and anywhere followers of Jesus are. May you use us as lights of blessing for others and for this world. Lord, we love you. It's in Jesus name we pray, amen. All right, parents, don't forget, we want to see those pictures of Jesus ascending into heaven. So share those on our social media page. We love you guys, and we can't wait to see you soon.
It's been so great hanging out with you today and chatting with you in the comments, worshiping together even though we're apart. We're so grateful for this time, so grateful for you being here, but we also long to be back together whenever that may be. In the meantime, please let us know if you need anything. We have pastors available if you need prayer or to talk. We have funds available if you're stressed about the bills and we have other resources if you have needs. So reach out and let us know how we can help if you have needs right now. Now, we hope that you have a great week. I hope that you take Pastor Joe's challenge to go and be a blessing to others this week and hope that as you do that, you invite someone to join you here at the same time, same place next week. We'll see you next time.